Point of Grace is over 25 years into making music and making history, with 27 consecutive number one singles to the group's credit, a feat unmatched by any artist in all of music history. Denise, Lee, and Shelley are well versed in singing messages that matter to many, including Christmas music. Celebrating the 20th anniversary of their best-selling holiday album, A Christmas Story, on the road this December, the charming singers, wives, and mothers of children ranging from grade schoolers to adults talk about all of the wonderful and some of the difficult moments while celebrating Christmas throughout these various seasons of life. This very special episode of CCM Magazine's Features on Film is brought to you by our friends at Child Fund. I'm your host, Andrew Greer. So the first thing I want to talk about today, I don't want to just cat out of the bag this or anything, but I want to talk about age. Y'all have had a milestone this year, haven't you? (laughs) 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 Well, is it? I mean, you've been kind. You're okay with it. Yeah, you have to be, don't we? Yeah, you posted on social media like, ha ha, look what happened. Yeah, we're fifty. Oh, there it is. Well, Lee and Denise turned (laughs) fifty. Yeah, we could have said you're pregnant, you know, or something. Okay, so think yeah. about if you Christmas time. Okay. Okay, at this stage of your life or this new milestone kind mm-hmm. of benchmark, and you can think about when you were 20, think about when you were 30, think even about a few years ago. <sighs> How is Christmas different for you and now, today? Today than it was. Yeah, than it was. Ago? Yeah, if you just think about yeah. how life has evolved mm-hmm. and well, I mean, I think like our when our kids are younger. Well, Lee, Lee still does have one younger She's one. She's still got one. Baby. <laughs> but you know, all of our kids are very into tradition and the, all of all of the holidays, and you know, getting out the decorations and just making everything sort of Martha Stewart perfect in a way. Mm-hmm. But I do think that at least the older mine has gotten. Um, she still loves all that, but I think that it's more about the family being together and sort of the beauty of a simple Christmas Hmm. as opposed to the bells and whistles Making everything come true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just being together. Yeah, and I don't know. I've just noticed that I've kind of cut back on just the... The rush. All of it, the decorations and the rush and the gifts and how many. And I don't know. I think that comes... With age, so hopefully we're imparting some of the beauty of a more simple Christmas mm-hmm. um, onto our kids. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, well, I've noticed even with our family, you know, we were apprehensive about let's don't do, even draw names anymore, uh-huh. and everybody was in agreement because everybody wants this time to be celebrated right. Right. instead of overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, we kind of stopped doing that and just just. The fact that affording to get to, if if my family, for instance, were all to come to Nashville, it takes money. gas money, right. hotel money, right. you know, all right. that. And so we just kind of come to, if you're going to, if we're going to come do this, then let's spend our money by, let's all go to Top Golf mm-hmm. and do a, mm-hmm. a fun night together mm-hmm. and spend, that's, you know, that's the money Time. we spend. Yeah. Time together. Mm-hmm. But I do miss, I think <laughs> the one thing I really miss is the age when our kids were on the best for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That. As, Touring the was the sweetest. They miss it too. They miss yeah, it too. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they would actually go it. on the road for a good yeah. portion of the Christmas yeah. tour. Yeah, for a good portion of the Christmas tour. I mean, I have the cutest video of Caroline um, on the side of the stage when we were on tour with Amy and Michael. And Amy Grant and Michael W. <laughs> Smith <laughs> dropped those names. Yeah, yeah. Amy who? And Michael walking <laughs> off stage from doing one of his piano things. And, you know, Caroline doesn't know who he is. Right. Uh, you know, he, he's just the nice man on the tour. And he picks her up and he's dancing around with her <laughs> during when Amy's singing a song. And I'm just like, she has no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, not back then probably. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and there of course, my son... Emotion pushed Amy Grant off the elevator because he didn't want <laughs> her in our elevator. Like he thought it was ours. Who wanted Grace elevator? elevator. Yeah. He was yeah. like, uh-uh. I love that. Yeah, this she, is... I was like, you don't know who you're talking yeah. to. Yeah. Point of Grace hasn't toured with Amy Grant since. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Oh, is oh. it? <laughs> is it true? Yeah. 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 She, but they love it. They would decorate. Awesome. the. I remember mm-hmm. like Darby and Caroline would bring 
Christmas lights and Christmas stickers. That was a big thing to go to Michael's yep. before the first night of the Christmas tour. They had and the little flannel sheet, Christmas yep, sheet. Decorate their bus oh, yeah. bunks. It and it was the best of times. I mean, mm -hmm. they loved it. Yeah, it's and, awesome. and we would wake up and it might be snow mm -hmm. in Indiana. We mm -hmm. would wake up the next day mm -hmm. and it, might, it was just magical for them. It was really sweet. Okay, so speaking of tours, and kind of not simplifying. This right. is the, right. potentially one of the biggest Christmas tours y'all have done in the last four or five years, right? So 20th anniversary mm -hmm. of your very first, Point of Grace's very first Christmas mm -hmm. record, A Christmas Story. Yes. Okay, Going on tour, doing all the bells and whistles, production, everything. But the special part of it, I think, for the audience is that you're actually going to do that record, A Christmas Story, mm -hmm. which is now 20 years old, two right. decades, right? You're going to do it, perform it from start to finish in mm -hmm. the back half of the night. Mm -hmm. Now, this, you know, you've had a long list of Christmas records, mm -hmm. and that was a huge one and big selling, but all of them have sold well. All mm -hmm. of them have had uh, popular songs on them. All of them have had their place right. in kind of our Christmas holiday traditions. But people keep coming back to this one. You guys keep coming back to this one, the songs on it, the messages of it, even as a whole, mm -hmm. this Christmas story record. Why is that? Hmm. Um, oh, it's a rich question. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that what I mean, part of it is a numbers game in a way. I mean, that is the biggest selling Christmas record. It was just, you know, of all that time. Was, of all time, of any, <laughs> anybody. any genre of music, yeah. anywhere, at any time. No, but it was, for us, it was the, definitely the, the biggest one in the heyday, if you will. And so I think it was just the soundtrack to a lot of people's Christmases mm -hmm. during yeah. that time. And we'll still have people that come up to us today and say, I didn't even know you guys were still singing together and stuff, but I have the, that Christmas album with the white snow and the horses mm -hmm. on the front. You know, like, and so it's like, um, I don't know, I think it's just a like a part of a, a lot of people's traditions Tradition. because right. it sold a lot of records. Uh -huh. It was kind of permeated mm -hmm. in that season of our life in a lot of houses. It really was. And in some ways, you didn't even have to be a Point of Grace fan. Right. That's what happens with these Christmas records. That's right. Mm -hmm. You may not have even had a Point of Grace record or been to a Point of Grace show, and yet this has become maybe mom's mm -hmm. playing it, maybe your sister's playing it, maybe your brother's playing mm -hmm. it. You know, so Christmas has a way of kind of seeping in and becoming a part of our traditions. But there are songs on it. Like, I, I remember this particular song I remember from that recording was uh, Emmanuel that oh, Nathan and Christy yeah. Knuckles mm -hmm. wrote, mm -hmm. right? And it paints this beautiful picture, right, of this older woman who finds herself alone at Christmas, mm -hmm. finds herself in a kind of darkening the door of a church by herself to basically, I think, pray this prayer that is like, do you hear me? Yeah, you know, I'm lonely. You, yeah, I'm lonely. And I don't think that is, as much as we like to um, kind of gloss over Christmas as being this simple, joyous, Most wonderful happy, time of the year. Right. right. Mm -hmm. It actually is contrasted with a lot of lonely feelings. It's, mm -hmm. it's even in our calendar in the darkest time of the year environmentally. Like we have the shortest days. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. It's kind of That's interesting. Right. It's cold. So it's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of this time where we're, we're going inward. So why do you think Christmas is contrasted with such kind of this poignant loneliness or you don't even have to be single or a widow or you could be with spouses and kids and still have some of that ache mm -hmm. and what do we do with that mm -hmm. you know I, maybe because christmas is a time for us to reflect on our past you know whether it's that childhood that was great or maybe a childhood that wasn't so great um yeah, I mean, for me, my grandfather passed away on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it took us a few Christmases to feel like it was okay to celebrate. Um, so because Christmas is that intentional time where you um, stop the busyness of your life to be with, the, with your friends and your family, and when some of those very special people aren't present, it's it's mm. that time of grieving. I don't think, mm -hmm. and and Christmas allows you that time to be specific about it because it's it's here, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, the older we get, I think God gives us a little more eyes to see that person that's lonely mm -hmm. at, at Christmas, and um, just because we're living. We're experiencing more of life at an mm -hmm. older age, and we're seeing a little bit of everything, you know. 
when you're little, you're not paying attention. Mm-hmm. You, know? you just care about the presents. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and if you're in a home where parents are stewarding that home, you're you're not given some of the responsibility right. of the heaviness of life. Sure. But you are now parents, and you're parents of adult children, and all the way to, to grade school <laughs> children. I mean, you yeah, have right. the full yeah. gamut. You know, parenting alone can be a can bring its own grief and sorrow, even in just the amount of love you have for your children as they, you know, you have two boys who are now, you're an empty nester for the first time this year. So this may be a tender question, but what are some of those, maybe it's not specifically loneliness, but what is some of that, what are some of those kind of contrasting feelings that you're feeling a little bit this year at Christmas? Hmm. Well, I think contrasting feelings, and I think I struggle with this, Always, I'm one of those people that wants to wants the perfect fa- mm-hmm. fairy tale story, mm-hmm. and you know we watch the Hallmark movies. Everything <laughs> ends in a perfect uh-huh. ra- red bow, you know. Um, and life just isn't that way. And and if you allow yourself to sometimes focus on um, disappointment, can creep in. Like whether it's you know you you just think I just want to have the perfect meal, you know. So as a <laughs> as the moms who fix the meal or. You know, our family family is coming. We want it to be perfect. We want mm-hmm. everyone to just enjoy every moment. But then you kind of, uh-huh. you don't. There's right. a side of you that that something is always missing. Does it feel like like almost like that kind of perfect perfect picture is almost a mask for some things at times? Maybe. I think what you I think you hit on it a minute ago when you said it's kind of contrasted with this ache. Yeah. yeah. And I think the ache that that you're talking about actually. It's just that the ache in every one of us. I, sometimes I'll notice it. I can be at the most perfect hotel on on in the perfect weather, mm-hmm. you know, in the perfect chair. And there's always still something missing. And it's this side of, it's just that it's, mm-hmm. we're on the, you know, this side of heaven. We're not mm-hmm. there yet. Like we're not home yet. Mm-hmm. And so I think that it's really, sometimes you notice that in the midst of what should be the most perfect times, the most joyous, happy, fulfilling times. Christmas would be Mm -hmm, one of them, mm -hmm. a great vacation, Mm -hmm. anything like that. And there's still this something, and I think most humans would say Mm -hmm. that, you know, and it's it's just the hole in our heart that's supposed to be filled Mm -hmm. with eternity. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to remember that sometimes. But I think that's what it is. And maybe that's part of why we sense that even sometimes a little more at Christmas time is because like you were hitting on Lee, it's a season of remembering, not just remembering those who we live beside, mm-hmm. but really like we go back to the prophecies in Isaiah and we, and we read those scriptures that were long before, like when they were experienced mm-hmm. the whole and Darkness, their spiritual yeah. journey, right? Mm-hmm. And for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, you know, his name will be wonderful counselor, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace Mm -hmm. right it's it's we don't necessarily sit and reflect like we do we don't give Mm -hmm. ourselves permission maybe right Mm -hmm. like we do at christmas time Mm -hmm. and i wonder if that is a part of that you know yeah contrast Mm -hmm. you know there's a part of your touring experience this year is with child fund and y'all have partnered for many years with uh, different organizations Mm -hmm. that partner with communities Mm -hmm. through children I think it would be easy of a big Christmas tour, especially sell those tickets, sell that merchandise, feed your own families, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know I mean? And kind of leave it at that because you're still working hard and you're still singing and giving everyone a good time. But there's still this willingness. What is it about, especially a Christmas tour, that you're like, we do need to make room for looking at our neighbors in need across the world? 100% it's the best time of year to do it. Yeah. I think yeah. people's yeah. hearts are yeah. tender. Yeah towards it, mm-hmm. don't you yeah. feel? Yeah. And they're not aggravated by it. It's it's like they're mm-hmm. prepared. Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah. Oh. yeah, I think people's hearts are more prepared to give at Christmas and more, you know, they've just come through Thanksgiving and they're going, gosh, we have a lot to be thankful for. We're entering into this mm-hmm. season of plenty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there are so many people who are in a season of want perpetually. And so um, for us to offer the opportunity, um, you know, to help children through child fund or whatever it is we're doing at Christmas, people are a lot more likely usually to respond. So mm-hmm. it's a great time and platform mm-hmm. to be presenting that, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. It, okay, so go back to thinking about kind of Christmas as a whole, thinking about this place of your life, wherever that puts you. And Christmas means so many different things to so many different people, right? Mm-hmm. To so many different people. 
What does Christmas mean to you sitting here today? Mm. Today it means stressing out because we have a lot <laughs> of music <laughs> to learn. We have a yeah, lot yeah, of music yeah, to learn. True. I love bringing it to the practical. That's right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but this is true. Yeah. Ah. Can you think past that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, let's, I, let's say the tour is over. What is Christmas mean to you this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think all of us will say this, the older you get, the more you really recognize the, the true gift of Christmas. And, um, and the more you age, hopefully, the more you're falling in love with Jesus and, mm -hmm. and why he came. And it's, and it's truly because he wanted, they, he wanted to give us life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that's just the hope of a tour of putting out Christmas music is, you know, our hope is that we can introduce somebody to Jesus that mm -hmm. maybe didn't really understand, oh yeah, this baby's born and stuff, but this, this baby changes your life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and Christmas is a time when people can invite a friend and a neighbor mm -hmm. that they might not feel sure. comfortable inviting them to church, but Christmas mm -hmm. music kind of runs the gamut. And, it does, yes. um, and this record is fun that way. Mm -hmm. So those who love this record know that it has all kinds of styles yeah. in it. And lots of secular music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she's mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah. <laughs> um, Better watch out. Better watch out. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, it is a time where um, hopefully that um, you know, we do talk about that, that place of disappointment and those dark places and, you know, life is hard. Mm -hmm. And so for, for people to be able to come, music speaks to the soul, I believe like mm -hmm. nothing else mm -hmm. and, um, makes your heart tender to things. And, um, and so if that is a, a place that their hearts can be opened up to, to see hope and light and who Jesus mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that, that would be our hope. And even for believers, life is still, you know, life's hard. Yeah. And yeah. we really forget sometimes what it means, that word Emmanuel, and that it means God with us. Mm -hmm. And that we we can live in this world that Shelly's talking about between between two yeah. worlds. You know, we uh -huh. can live in it because of the hope we have in him mm -hmm. with us yeah. in the midst of this. You know, so I don't know. But I, mm -hmm. But as far as... You know, in addition to that, in the moment I'm in right now, um, it's just fun being together. You mm -hmm. know, in the moment I'm in right now, I love being with them. I love singing with them. I mm. love traveling. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's scratch. Let me let's start that again. <laughs> no, there. You know, there's just so mm -hmm. much. Um, there's so many things that I could have been doing. Um, and I'm so glad I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. And um, it it's a message I'm proud of. Mm -hmm. um, and at Christmas, as like Denise said, you're not afraid to invite that family member, maybe mm -hmm. that, you know. Um, <laughs> But it's just it's it's a it, it's a message that matters, and we do it in such a way that um, that hopefully is pleasing to the ear, mm -hmm. but satisfies the soul, and um, and we really look pretty when we <laughs> we're all <laughs> stuck. <laughs> just kidding. Um, you do. But it's just it's just fun to do what God has put the desire in our heart to mm -hmm. want to do and how he has fulfilled it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a real yeah. gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a symbiotic relationship when people are living in their giftings, which I mm -hmm. believe y'all are together, and you do individually in different ways too, then it it also is satisfying. Mm -hmm. It is. We were talking about that yesterday, how mm -hmm. satisfying it is to be with people mm -hmm. who are you know, in their gift sets. and Yeah, I mean, you know, we miss a lot of Christmas things at home. We always have. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, I don't ever get to go to, like, my Bible studies Christmas party mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, but we do. Like Lisa said, we do have so much fun on the mm -hmm. road that it kind of doesn't matter. And one of our favorite things to do is to go... It's, it's as fun as Christmas morning. It's to go shop uh -huh. for the guys in our band <laughs> and spoil them at Christmas and get them things that they would never buy for themselves. Yeah. Like, you know, $100 Ugg slippers that they would never buy for themselves. <laughs> and 
I mean, just to see how happy they, and that, that we really thought about them uh -huh. and, or like uh -huh. gotten them some certain mm -hmm. record that they want or whatever it is. And then we have a little party on the bus and we like try to make it really nice and have nice food and stuff like after a show. And it just brings them so much joy that it brings us uh -huh. joy. Uh -huh. And it's just fun to, to do that. And it's to me, that's one of the most fun parts of Christmas uh -huh. is our dumb little, little bus, bus, bus party. party it's so fun it's that we, we like, like really go all out we do yes. you'll never know yeah. we're not inviting you because no. you turn your nose up at yeah. it Bye. no that's awesome well i don't know if you can do this with tea mugs oh, cheers i can do it with but tea cheers mugs. we are thankful for you merry oh, christmas you guys. Merry, merry christmas thank you merry christmas <laughs> Oh, you know I wanna go, wanna go, wanna go. Come on, weather man, give us a forecast, snowy white. Can't you hear the prayers of every childlike heart tonight? Rockies are calling, Denver snow falling. Somebody said it's four feet deep, but it doesn't matter. Give me the laughter. I'm gonna choose to keep another tender Tennessee Christmas. The only Christmas for me where the love circles around us like the gifts around our tree well i know there's more snow up in colorado than my roof will ever see but a tender tennessee christmas is the only christmas for me I get a wandering urge to see Maybe California Maybe Tinsel Towns for me There's a parade there We'd have it made there Bring home a tan for New Year's Eve It sure sounds exciting Awfully inviting Still, I think I'm gonna keep another tender Tennessee Christmas. The only Christmas for me, where the love circles around us, like the gifts around our tree. Well, they say in LA it's a warm holiday, it's the only But a tender Tennessee Christmas is the only Christmas for me.